Oh no, I left this out all day. All right, well, it's raining, so uh, I was gonna use this, but um, the GoPro deals with rain better. Now, it's very plausible that you weren't expecting a vlog style video when you read the title of this, but that's kind of how I do things, so if you want to stick around while I just like commute to work and say a couple things here and there, you can. Or you can skip ahead to, to this time uh, where I actually get to the, the real subject matter. skateboarding is because I actually want to ride my gravel bike home so I can't bring a bike with me done a really bike nerd filled vlog and considering the way today is going I feel like today is probably the right day to really delve into one subject that I know brought a lot of you here to begin with and uh okay. ah! now I know the majority of you will be unfamiliar with the suck it game but it's a game that me and all the like you know decent riders downtown play against each other where if you see one another uh, you yell out suck it at the loudest you can and if you get got it's the worst ever and I just got got. That's so flustered. Don't remember where I was. Right, these things. All right, I'm gonna stop sweating a little bit, so I'm gonna I'm gonna wait so that I can not be so disgustingly sticky and uh, do a quick camera swap to something that will shoot a little bit clearer, and uh, we'll jump right into this subject of my definition of what a gravel bike is. gravel bike market it's it's pretty easy to get fully consumed by all of the different marketing buzzwords and just in general all the marketing that goes along with it and with all of that it's easy to get kind of confused about what a gravel bike actually is so I want to take this as a second to like simply define what a gravel bike is in my opinion so there are two points that I think really characterize a gravel bike, one of which being far more important than the other, uh, the other, you know, it's a little more lenient. So the first and most important point that I really think comes into play when you're going to define a bike as a gravel bike comes down to its tire size. So when you're looking at a bike, it should really be immediately specced with something at at least 35 millimeters, like a 35C tire. And honestly, I'd rather that number be a little bit higher. I'd rather it almost be 38 millimeters, but there's a couple bikes on the market that have 35s, and I kind of think they, and I think that, yeah, they kind of make the cut a little bit. So I think I'll use an asterisk there to say like, eh, maybe gravel bikes really should be defined as 38 millimeter tires and higher, but 35s are okay. is that it's gonna be a drop bar bike and, and and yeah sometimes you see people riding a bike that they define as their gravel bike with a flat bar and that's okay too but in my definition a gravel bike is built with drop bars so the simple definition in my opinion of what a gravel bike is is a drop bar bike with a minimum of 35 millimeter wide tires and hopefully clearance for even bigger sorry I didn't mean to make it seem like 
I only like Clement tires. So uh, for argument's sake, let's just pretend that this bike has a, a 40C Nano on it. So I think it's probably worth going over why my definition of a gravel bike might be simpler than others. Now the reason that I like to define it as a drop bar bike is because I still do consider it in the road bike family, just as a bit of a subgenre. So if there was like a flow chart that starts up here as road bike, you'd get something along the lines of like race bike, endurance bike, aero bike, adventure bike, and then gravel bike. And then there's touring bikes and all that stuff. But I do consider the gravel bike its own subgenre of a road bike. And from there, you'll get into all these like different versions of a gravel bike. And in all honesty, those are all just very specific versions like you'd get in the world of like an endurance bike, a race bike. Different companies build different things in that don't necessarily mean that it's a gravel bike. It's just their take on how they want the gravel bike to feel. All these extra things that companies build in, like shock absorbing stems and seat posts and different frame design and different fork design, that's all just gravy on top of the large tire. Because in my opinion, the large tire makes up for the most comfort. Everything else, like I said, is just gravy on top. I also didn't bother mentioning the brake, like a disc brake versus a rim brake. I also didn't mention gearing, and I also didn't mention frame geometry, purely because I believe all those things to be personal preference. Me, for example, on my gravel bike setup right here, I'm using an Avid cantilever brake setup, and I really don't think that a disc brake characterizes a type of bike. Road bikes have rim brakes and road bikes have disc brakes. Gravel bikes can have rim brakes and gravel bikes can have disc brakes. Gearing, like I said, is personal preference. The gearing on this bike is, is hardly what you would expect from like a stock gravel grinder. On a gravel grinding bike, you generally see uh, maybe a similar chainring setup, like a cyclocross chainring setup, maybe smaller, but then a really big wide range cassette, something from like an 11 to a 34. Uh, I'm using like a road style cassette on this bike purely because that's what works in my area. If I went somewhere that had massive, massive climbs, perhaps I'd consider putting something on a little bit bigger, but you can do that on any type of bike. This to me is still a gravel bike in the summer. <laughs> And then finally, geometry. When it comes down to it, you can't say as a blanket statement that one specific type of geometry is going to work across the board for everybody's gravel riding style. So I'm using an old cross bike that can clear up to like 45 mil tires with a different fork. The geometry is all over the place. I really don't know what it is, but it works totally fine for me. And I actually have a blast on this bike constantly, which kind of brings me to my next point. Can a cyclocross bike or like any other bike for that matter be a gravel bike? Uh, and to that I answer yes, because I do it myself and I'd be a hypocrite if I didn't. But I think that it should follow those rules of like uh, drop bar and fitting 35 mil tire and up. Uh, beyond that, if you're riding off road on a bike with like a smaller tire or you're riding like a mountain bike, then you're riding whatever that type of bike. If you're riding a 29er mountain bike, you know, you're riding a 29er mountain bike. Maybe it's a fully rigid flat bar mountain bike. That's a mountain bike. Uh, if you're riding something with a smaller tire than 35, hell man, you're probably riding a super capable uh, adventure bike or a really impressive road bike that can fit, like, you know, a respectable amount of tire. But anyway, that's all just bike nerdy stuff uh, that I kind of like to talk about. And we haven't done, we haven't done this in a little while. So uh, just remember my definition and hopefully everybody else's now, because we should all agree with each other of a gravel bike is 35 mil or bigger for tire and uh, drop bars. But if you don't have drop bars, maybe that's not as big a deal. Okay, so that ends that uh, segment of the vlog. Um, what did I used to do in the winter when I finished stuff like this? I say that this bike after the summer won't be a gravel bike anymore as well it's my B bike for cyclocross so it'll go back to 33 mil tubulars and I'll be racing it all winter well if something goes wrong with the crux during a race so bam under 35 mil tires not a gravel bike anymore I mean this thing's a transformer anyway because that was kind of the idea of it 
at the time when Specialized built the Tricross. This was fun. I haven't done a video like this in a long time. Since like last summer. Or 